All right, lesson three, we're going to go over the GUI operations for Niagara Files. And I'm going to break this up into three areas. The first one is I'll show you how to use the uh, NiFi toolbar. We'll go over each of the components. Uh, basically, the toolbar is uh, configured into three functions. You have uh, on the left side, you have uh, functions that let you uh, interact with the um, various processors. The middle one lets you do actions like starting and stopping the processor. And then on the far right, is uh, things to let you manage uh, the NiFi and some of the processors. Uh, we'll go over the graphical area, which actually uh, where you put the actual processors, and we'll go over you know, how you can zoom in and zoom out and move stuff around and look at that. And then we'll go over navigation, how you can navigate through NiFi to look at different things. And then for this demo, I'm going to put I'm going to create a demo directory that I'm going to be writing files in just for an example. Uh, basically, I'm going to generate some files and write them to a directory, and then we'll just go, go over the toolbar and see how that is used and interacts with NiFi. Okay, let's go over the toolbar. It's got a toolbar area up top over the GUI, um, and we have a navigation area on the left to move around, uh, and one on the right for zooming in and out, and then we have a graphical user area in the center there where we're going to put our processors. We also have something that shows the state of our processors, whether they're running, stopped, if there's a queue or not. And let's go ahead and work with the upper left part here where we could actually modify and make some processors. So let's go ahead and drag one down. We're going to go ahead and generate a flow file. Let's go ahead and do generate flow file. I'm going to add it to our graphical user area. And you can see here we can kind of move it around. We can use the window on the right here to kind of move around the whole window. And if you want, you can actually close that window there by clicking here. And we'll go ahead and enable. I usually leave that enabled. You can also navigate around with the buttons over here. You can zoom in. You can zoom out. Um, you can uh, try and center it if you want. Um, and also you can use these little buttons here to kind of navigate around as well. And then we can see you know, what we need to do to make this processor enabled. And it shows that we have one processor running that needs some work. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Let's move it over a little bit. And let's go ahead and add another processor. We're going to add a put file. We're going to write our generated file to the hard drive. Let's go ahead and do that. And then just to enable the flow file, you just simply drag a line over from the left to the right to the put file on success. And we'll go back to our scheduling. We'll generate a file every 10 seconds. And then we're going to go ahead and generate a one kilobyte file size we did before. And we'll go ahead and make it a text file. Not that we're going to look at it, but why not? And let's see. For the put file, let's go ahead and we're going to put everything into this demo directory here. So let's copy that text address and let's put it in here for our directory for the destination. And for the resolution strategy, we're just going to go ahead and ignore if the file's already there with the same name. Go ahead and apply that. And then we're going to go ahead and self-terminate as well. Let's see. Um, actually, we can show we have one running and one that needs to be worked on. So let's go ahead now and go back and self-terminate this put file processor by closing them out. And now we see we have two processors ready to go. Go ahead and refresh that. And then to get it going, we can actually disable this one if you want. This comes in handy if there's certain processors you just don't want to run at all. Uh, you can even If you try to play it, it won't let you play it. It'll come up with an error message. Um, sometimes if you have a lot of flow files and there's certain ones you just don't want to run, it's good to do this. So we'll go ahead and go back and enable that. Hit the play button to start generating a file. And then you can see we have one file generated in the queue. We'll generate a file every 10 seconds. Now you can see we have one stopped and one started. We can look at our um, NiFi summary file to see that we have two processors there, one start, one's running, one stopped. Uh, we can look at the connections to see how many we have in the queue, which is of interest. If you had a lot of files backed up, this is where you would go. Um, see if something's wrong with the processor. And the users, we'll talk about that later just to show what users are logged in. Um, let's see. Go ahead and put the foot play the foot file, and you can see that we had six files in the queue. They're all gone now. They've all been written to the demo directory. So let's go ahead and delete all these. And 
let's go ahead and look at something called a processor group. A processor group lets you put like processors into a common area. <coughs> so we're going to create a create a file processor and we're just going to simply take our generate flow file processor and just pretty much just copy it into this um, sub processing group. Let's drag this out a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. And we'll put it in here. And now we have this generate flow file with the same settings we had before. Now for this one, we need to create an output file, output port. So we're going to go ahead and create that. So our generate flow files will have an output port to go to. And now we're going to go ahead and you can see that, that it shows us the different directories that we're in, different levels. Now we have an output port. And we're just going to simply drag a line up from our processing group over here to this input of the NiFi write file. Let's go ahead and start this up. Just click on the whole uh, processing group, hit play, and both of the processors will start. So you now you can see we wrote one already into the directory. So again, every 10 seconds we'll go ahead and write a file. Uh, let's go ahead and make another processing group. And this one will have a, have a group where we're going to write something to a file. So we're just going to do another put file, but we'll put it in this um, processing group. Same deal as before, just copied it. Um, we're going to have an input file we got to put in here now as opposed to the output file that we had before. Um, oh, this is, I think I have the wrong processor here. Let me go back and delete that. And we'll put an input. Yes, this needs an input because it's going into the put file directory. Same deal, just drag it over, go ahead and add it, and now we have an input to our put file, and you can see the settings are exactly the same that we had for the other one. Go ahead and start them all up. And again, same sort of deal, we just grab a file from the generate flow file and drag it over and define that we want it to go to our in for input directory. Let's go ahead. It's getting kind of busy with all these crossover points here, but let's go ahead and just run a file into this um, new subprocessing group. And you can see that we have one in there. And we also have one in the queue for the one above it. You can also do this thing called a funnel. Since we have two inputs going into this put file, we can actually drag both of them into this funnel point. And so it, it serves as a way to channel all these flow files going through one uh, one flow area. We're still going to have two files going through here. They're not combined, but it's just a simple way to make the graph easier to look at. So we can drag that over. And yeah, all our files will go through this little funnel here, and the both everything will get written to the put file. Let's go ahead and start that. Start that. And now you can see that we had some files in the queue, and now they're all gone because we stopped started everything. Uh, we have templates we can do. We'll get back to that one in a minute. You can also have this thing called label, where you can actually just create a label for all your processors if you want to just highlight some group of them to show th some common functionality. Um, you can actually uh, you know, change the color of it if you want. We can actually use the color bar on the right here, or else we can actually type in um, the actual color code. So if we want to make it say green, we'll just type this in, and you can see the background's all green. So. Um, it's handy if you want to show some flows that are good or not not good. You make them red. You can also give it a title. You can also set the title to a certain font size. And then for the um, the processors, you can kind of do the same thing. You can set this one to red. Let's see. Let me try that again. All right, I'm gonna try to set the background color for this. Come on. I'm going to try one more time. Okay, so you see the background color is red. So this is good if you have like an error flow you want to highlight. So all these flows represent, all these processes represent maybe an error flow that you want to want to highlight. Okay, let's go stop everything. Let's get rid of our funnel by moving everything back the way it was. In order to move these things off the funnel, you got to stop all the processing. And we'll go ahead and delete our funnel. 
And let's see. So now we're going to go ahead and let's see. We talked about this. We're going to go ahead and um, create a template. So templates are good if you want to use the same processors over and over again. Uh, you just go ahead and you can either group them all together or just pick one. Usually it's more than just one when you're creating a template. So we can save that template and give it a name. Um, and then if you want, you can actually go over to the left on the toolbar up here and just grab that template you just created. This is right to file, and now we just grab the template that we already we just made. So that way we don't have to keep making the same processor over and over again, or processing group. Again, we can do this for anything. All right, let's go back in. Let's go ahead and stop this. And there's some other things here that will be enabled or disabled depending if the processor is running or not. If it's running, you won't be able to do certain functions. Um, and you have to stop it in order to do other things. So let's go ahead and stop it. And now you can see that the delete, let's see this again, the delete button, you can see up there the big X up here is now enabled because I stopped the processor. Another thing you can do is you can actually search for a processor. So let's give our processor a unique name for put file. Again, if you have hundreds of these things, it's hard to track down specific ones. It's easier if you name them all separately. So we'll give this one a specific name. We'll just say uh, write it. And then we're going to go back up to our search um, bar on the upper right there. And we're going to search for it. So let's type write it. And right away you can see that it's directed us to where that processor is. We can click on it and it'll take us right to that processor. Again, this is handy if you have hundreds of processors and you want to find a specific one. This search bar really comes in handy. All right, let's just generate a lot of files here. We're going to change the flows to go to one a second instead of one every 10 seconds. And let's let it run for just a little bit here. And you can see the queue is already building up. We have two in the queue here. And now we're up to, it looks like six or eight. And we can actually look at um, the admin, me admin menu on the right here to see, again, what processes are running. But more importantly, we can see where the queues are backing up. So if files are backing up, we can use this menu to actually see where it's happening. Click the arrow, it'll take us right to where the queue's backing up. So again, if you have hundreds of files and there's, uh, uh, they're backing up somewhere, this comes in handy to actually locate where it is. Okay, let's clear this out and start the put file again. So that queue goes down to zero. And let's see, I'm going to go to the knife flow, flow history. Okay, this shows you who modified your flows over time. So if you remember, um, this is all stuff I've done. If you remember, I had a funnel, I actually deleted it. It shows that I deleted it. I was user anonymous. Um, you can also see that I actually created the funnel right here. So it's a good way to track who's been kind of messing with your flows. And there's a later lesson that shows you how to add users and stuff. Uh, provenance events are interesting. That's a whole other lesson. But basically it shows you how to track individual files as they flow through your system. This just shows one file that we created and then how we actually nav navigated through our system. Again, this is a whole other lecture, but I just wanted to show you that it's there. I know this is covering a lot of stuff really fast. Um, this 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 uh, thing here lets you go ahead and back up your flow file if you if you want to make what I do is if, you, if I make before I make changes I'll go ahead and back my flow file up so that if I need to go back to what I had before I have it there. So this just comes in handy for that. You can also set the thread sizes here for the, for the number of processors you want to run. And of course you can type any comments you want. So again this is good for backing up your flow file. Controller services, again, that's a whole other lecture, but of interest here is this is where you would set your, for example, your connection pools. If you want to talk to a database, this is where you would define your connections. And then reporting, if you want to monitor certain aspects of your flow files, of your processors, this is where you would do it here. Again, this is a whole other lecture. Just want to show you that it's here. Go to the NIFI documentation. I'm sure they'll have better description than what I'm giving you right now. Uh, let's see, uh, the templates, okay, it showed you the template we created, um, you can load it in or actually you can delete it if you want, or if there's other templates out there that people have created, you can actually browse to their, to the directory they're located and import them. And again, this goes back to our bulletin board we showed before, and we don't have any messages being generated now, so of course it's empty. And let's see, the last thing... I want to do is show some history. I think we showed this before, but we can show the history of files that have come into or come out of this certain processor. 
you can do a number of flow file counts, or you can do the sizes. Again, it's convenient to show that there's activity going through your um, through your data flow here. Now, the most important thing you can get out of this lecture is uh, the, sh the shift um, right-click button. That'll help you move these wires that you see, that wire between the processors. So it makes it look a little prettier as far as trying to see where the flow is actually going visually. So uh, again, you hit uh, shift, right-click to create these little nodes, these little elbows are called. And it makes it really easy to try to visually see how the flow is working out um, in your whole NiFi processing thing here. Uh, if you want to undo one of the elbows, you just hit uh, control and then the right button. That's it. Lesson three, recap. Okay, in this lesson we talked a lot about the, uh, the GUI for NiFi. I know it went really fast and we covered a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, it's a video, so just play it over and over again, and you can figure out what I'm trying to show here. Uh, we show the toolbars. to show how it's divided pretty much into three areas, where there's a uh, component on the left is to let you, uh, you know, modify some flows and create some flows. Um, in the center was uh, one that lets you do the starting and stopping of NiFi. You can create templates um, from there as well. And then on the far right were components that let you actually manage some of the NiFi things, um, such as uh, some of the admin functions for uh, looking at the queues and looking at uh, some of the uh, data flows, as well as to see who's been kind of modifying your uh, processors. Um, and we also did the uh, search bar function where you could actually search for certain processors. Uh, but again, like the most important thing of all, as you can remember this, is if you hit shift right, you can actually add elbows to your uh, connectors, so it makes it easy to, to view where your flow is going um, and uh, see where things are, are heading out.